Hello, I'm Guy, and this is Guy Robot. Hello, well, this week I'm going to try and do another paper review in five minutes. Sorry, didn't get one done last week, had a ton of other things, wasn't on the schedule for my stuff to actually do for university, and I got crazily ill, which I'm still recovering from. Sorry if I sound a bit weird and underwater, apparently I just have the worst cold known to man. Anyway, that's already about 10 seconds gone. So, this week I looked at, is the uncanny valley actually an uncanny cliff? which was written by Bartnett, Kando, Shugu, and Hagita. For those of you who aren't aware, the Uncanny Valley is a concept that came out originally in the 70s, or was forgotten about for quite a long time, that as a robot becomes more and more human, then people like it more. Until it looks too close to being human, then it just plummets off the likability scale and no one likes it. And then the theory is that as it gets actually to be truly human, it comes out the other side and people go, hey, that's awesome. So that's the theory, anyway. So uh, clowns, dead bodies, zombies, they all end up in the Uncanny Valley as well. But the coming up the other side has never really been proven. And this paper works on the basis of going, well, is it actually possible to come out the other side? Or is it just a case of you enter the Uncanny Valley and unless you're actually human, you don't come out? So this paper looks at a psychological concept known as framing. That is the idea that we have experiences that build up to frames in our head. So the example given in the paper is you walk into a restaurant, you've already got a frame in your mind for what going into a restaurant's like, you know what to expect next, you're going to be asked whether or not you want to be seated at a table and for how many people. You then know you're going to get asked what food you want, you place the order, etc, etc, etc. We know how to react if these things don't happen. We can ask a waiter, we can storm out angrily, whatever, but we build up these experiences and they are frames of reference for us and this is framing from a psychological standpoint. So this paper decided it was going to look at this concept of likability versus human likeness in a bunch of pictures. In total, 18 different pictures divided into a series of subcategories. They were human, manipulated humans, so picture data from Star Trek, human but slightly different facial colouring, computer-generated humans, androids, humanoids, and pet robots. Now, humanoids and pet robots are very obviously robots. In particularly the humanoid ones, we're not talking about commander data from Star Trek, that's an android. We're talking about just, I don't know, weird metallic ones like something Boston Dynamics would make and you'd hit away their things with a hockey stick because you'd be mean to them. That would be humanoid robot. They then came up with three different questionnaires. So for each of these 18 pictures, they categorized different frames for each of the images. So apart from the ones that were obviously robots, which were the humanoids and the pet robots, everything else was picked as either just being a face, a human, or a robot. And so the question said, with this robot, with this human, to try and see if there was any difference in terms of how people have an initial perception in their mind for these. They then asked the questions that fundamentally came to, how much do you like it? And through a series of um, different questions on a rating scale, how much you thought it was like a human in terms of its looks, without directly asking you that question. They then looked at something called the Cronbach Alpha to look at the internal structure of test results to see if they are consistent, and it came out with a good result, which as far as they were concerned, and as far as me looking at the paper means, actually they did a very thorough and detailed set of tests. Actually, framing had no impact. It didn't matter if you took a human and called them a robot, or if you took a robot and called them a human or a robot. It doesn't matter which way around you do it. Actually, the people's opinion on how likeable something is has nothing to do with the frame of reference, which is interesting. The other thing is that the more actually human something is, the bigger impact it has. And to a degree, what was in the original paper, um, and the original suggestions, is true. A robot that is kind of like a toy robot, like the now, something that looks a bit fun and cute, but doesn't really look very human at all, other than the fact it might have a head and arms that look nothing like ours. They are the most liked things. They are more liked than humans but they're accepted that they don't really look anything like humans. Now, interesting, when you get to the incredibly similar to um, humanoid faces, um, some of which I'll link in pictures to this, but the android robots that look really, really, really human, they sit very similar to human on the scores in terms of A, likeness, and B, how liked they were. And the interesting thing is that the how light they are isn't that high. So what this ends up coming up with is a quadratic curve rather than the massive valley where there's a big dip as you get towards becoming more human-like 
and only a little bit going up the other side as they are much more human-like. And we're not just talking here about robots, because we're talking about CG image, we're talking about all kinds of other things. So basically, as something becomes more human, Mm, they all kind of lump together, and there's not really this big distribution. It certainly doesn't keep going up. You kind of you get to the robots we've got now, we're about as good as we've got with humans. So that poses the question then of, well, okay, what's the point of making a robot look human? And that's a really good question. I've been thinking a lot about the uh, empathy side of the robots, being able to relate to them, and thinking of it from a humanoid perspective, because I always wanted to create commander data from Star Trek. Who didn't? But the real question is, should we? Actually, is it the wrong way to go? And if we want to have a relationship with robots, and I don't mean like a kind of freaky deaky relationship with robots, but I mean as a species, we want to have a relationship with robots, then should we maybe be looking at non-humanoid robots as the way for us to forge those relations going forward and for us to actually like them and work better with them rather than trying to make them look human? And that's an interesting question, and it certainly made me think. Overall, I really like this paper. Uh, I've gone on too much now, so I'm going to try and cut this back. But I found the scientific methods they did were good. I found they um, managed to come up with good sample questions, good way to validate their own information, and a good way to look at a problem that's actually very difficult to measure. They also picked up a few issues with their own paper, such as the fact that they only asked Japanese people, and the Japanese culture is very pro robots in the first place. So wanted to move it to other places, wanted to add some other variations to it, including moving images rather than just static images. I think it was a good paper. I think it's really worth a read if you're interested in how we relate to robots and looking at some of the changes in kind of what's happening. I mean, the fact that the robots in this paper are now almost 10 years old, and at the time they were cutting edge and things that were unimaginably testable 10 years ago. We've carried on with creating more and more human re robots, but is there any point to it? Or actually, should we be creating, I don't know, Robot cats. I do quite like cats. Maybe robot cats. Anyway, I'm going to leave that there. I'm Guy. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please press like. Otherwise, if you thought it sucked, press dislike. Hit subscribe if you want to see more of the stuff on my channel, as well as these papers and bits about computing, coding, vintage computer stuff, and random rubbish that I decide I'm going to review because I've bought it. Anyway, let me know how you think about this and leave your comments below. Thanks.